What's going on guys? This is Ayo with AOJ Photography and Video. And today we're gonna to be talking about the Zayun WeBuild Lab. It's literally the smallest gimbal I've seen that you can use with mirrorless cameras. So let's unbox it and see what it comes with. It's gonna come with a case to hold all your cable. That's a charging cable and also the cable so you can plug uh, your camera up to your gimbal and you can use the controls on the gimbal to start and stop recording and zoom in and stuff like that. It comes with a tripod foot, which is pretty much standard for all gimbals now. Of course, the charger it comes with this quick release plate, which is pretty nice. It's Manfrotto and Arco Swiss in one. You press this for Arco Swiss. And the bottom piece is gonna be Manfrotto. A Manfrotto plate can go onto the gimbal. This piece will not go onto a Manfrotto tripod. It also comes with this little riser here. If you're, if you're using bigger lenses on your um, gimbal, sometimes this plate will hit it. So you have to use this riser to, rise, to raise the camera up a little bit. One thing that I purchased is not included in the kit are these trans mounts. This is a quick release system that you can mount to your mini tripod in order to go from the bottom of the gimbal to the top and go to underslung mode. I mean, this thing is small. Like, this is a WeBuild Lab and this is a Crane Plus. This is just give you an idea how small this gimbal really is. While I do love the Crane Plus, I'm a wedding filmmaker and I'm always trying to find that next piece of gear that's gonna make my back lighter, smaller, and easier to use throughout the wedding day. It has these little buttons here that locks this. So if you're traveling with it, you can lock it and it's gonna lock in place so it doesn't move. Also, that will help you out when you're balancing the gimbal as well. Another feature that I really like about it is it has this LCD screen. This will allow me to see which mode I'm in when I'm filming. It has a dedicated button now for lock mode, hand follow, POV mode. You press POV twice to go into vortex mode. You press the trigger here twice to center the gimbal. You hold a trigger to go to full follow mode. That just makes it really easy and simple to go between the different modes. So after using the WeBuild Lab, I can say I really like it. It's small, it's compact, it's really easy to use. When you get your gimbal, make sure you update the firmware. Once you download the app, make sure you go in and adjust the strengths of your motor depending on what your setup is. I'm currently using an A7R 3 with a Tamron 28-75 f2.8 lens, so I put my motor strengths to high. Adjusting this setting correctly will give you more stable footage. Looking at a lot of reviews online, the WeBuild Lab footage was a little shaky, and this is probably the main reason. If you plan on getting the gimbal, make sure you invest in the trans mount. You're going to need two sets of those. That's going to make it a lot easier going from the bottom of the gimbal to the under sling mode. This plate, I have a love-hate relationship with this plate. They need to update it, I think. Um, so one thing about the plate, it will go onto a Manfrotto tripod, but you have to slide it in from the front of the tripod, not the back, because of the design. If you have the newer style Manfrotto tripod head where you can slide the plate in from the, at an angle, then this will work perfectly. 
The main reason why I wanted to use this plate is that this lens support system. While this works great when I'm using my Tamron 2875, I also do photography. So if I'm using my 85mm f1.4 G Master lens, I can't mount it because it's going to hit this plate. Once I install this riser to this plate, the lens support is no longer long enough to reach the bottom of my 2875. So therefore, I just, I'm just not using this setup at all. I'm just gonna use my small Manfrotto plate on the gimbal. That way, if I'm doing photo or video, I can just leave the same plate on and I don't have to be changing plates depending on which job I'm doing. I really like the idea of using my smartphone as a monitor. The only problem is once you hook that up to the app, you will no longer have face recognition. And because I'm a wedding filmmaker, I'm typically gonna want my bride or the groom's face in focus Therefore, I probably won't be using my phone as a monitor. But with the new design with this 45 degree angle with this back arm, I have the screen is a lot more visible. So I don't think I really need a monitor unless I'm going into the underslung mode. That's when I will need a monitor, but I can just flip the screen out like this and then I'll be able to see what I'm doing. If you plan on using smaller cameras with lighter lenses, this gimbal is perfect for you. If you plan on using bigger cameras, then you probably want to go with a Crane 3 Lab or Moza Air 2 or even the DJI Ronin S. But for me, those gimbals are just a little bit too heavy for me because I'm typically shooting for 8 to 10 hours a day at a wedding. Make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell button.